home Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Milton Abbas in Dorset. It's about six miles to the southwest of Blandford Forum and we're going to be doing a three mile circular walk with a little detour so probably nearer three and a half miles. We'll have a wander through the village itself. We'll be seeing uh, there are Abbey Church, a chapel, some glorious woodland and some quite stunning landscape scenery over Dorset. So do come along with us. Now I'm filming at uh, the uh, middle of August. The sun is out. There's a bit of cloud about so it might uh, get a little bit overcast later on but fingers crossed it should be perfect weather for walking. Let's go. Well I've parked my car by the church in the main street that passes through the village. Now before we go any further I need to tell you a little bit about the history of uh, the village otherwise the rest of the walk won't make any sense. It's set in a pretty wooded valley and it's a, a linear village with whitewashed cob and thatched cottages either side of a, a single road. It really is a photographer's delight. So a bit about the history of the village. Uh, well, in the 1770s, Joseph Damer, Lord Milton and the first Earl of Dorchester, an owner of Milton Abbey since 1752, uh, more of the Abbey later, he decided that the existing village of Middleton, that lay right next to the abbey and uh, Damer's house, was disturbing his rural idyll. So he decided to move the whole village out of his sight into the neighbouring valley called uh, Luckham Bottom. And he basically created this new village and called it Milton Abbas, made up of identical houses. He commissioned architect Sir William Chambers and landscape gardener Capability Brown, both of whom had already worked on the abbey buildings and grounds, to design the new village together, and they created this visually stunning village. And these thatched cottages, originally there were 20 each side, I think there are now just 36, were intended to house two families each, but times there could be up to 40 people living in one house and the houses were built from cob and were previously painted yellow and each house was fronted by a lawn and a terrace garden behind to accommodate vegetable gardens. Originally uh, there was a horse chestnut tree planted between each house but they were removed in 1953 as they were causing damage. So the whole village was moved gradually between 1773 and 1780. So what we'll do to start off the walk is we'll have a, a little wander down the main street in the village and uh, have a little explore. So we'll start off with the pub that's here on the left and this is the Hambro Arms. Now I read that initially Milton Abbas might have been a dry village as Lord Milton didn't want a pub here. So the pub was known previously as the Dorchester Arms and the uh, Port Arlington Arms and it finally became the Hambro Arms after Baron Hambro bought the abbey an estate of 8,000 acres in 1852. And next to the pub the old Methodist Chapel with a date of 1896. Looks like it's a residential property now. Next house along, Milton Abbas post office and stores. As we go down the street, many of the house names will give us clues as to the original inhabitants of the village. So there's a baker and the, a forge, etc. And many of the villagers, of course, were estate workers originally. And look at the green telephone box there. I think we saw one of those at uh, Portisham on our Hardy Monument Walk. I think this one is actually grade two listed. All right, continue with our little one. It's a shame, isn't it, that the, they have to have cars parked out, but that's modern life for you. <laughs> and just here on the right are the almshouses moved from the old village where they'd been originally built. So they would have been built here when the village was created in 1779. 
and then opposite I just slowly pan around is the uh, St James's Church built in well 1779 1780 it was consecrated in 1786 as you can see it's in gothic style there were some late additions in 1886 and it has a tower with three stages a clock on the north face so there's a nave chancel south vestry south aisle of three bays and uh, a west tower and every two years the village has a street fair here where the street is blocked off and they have stalls and all the villagers get dressed up in 17th century costume. Some of these houses here are so well presented. Look at the <laughs> wisteria outside there. And look, you can see how the, the gardens go uh, uphill, up the valley behind there on a slope. Well, we're nearly at the end of the street. We've just passed the old bakery. And this is the old forge. And look at those wonderful wooden sculptures. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Now this is at the end of the street, a lovely thatched uh, single storey property there and then just next to it this is the, uh, the vicarage and then just on the left hand side the building here, this is where the brewery used to be that used to supply the, the village with ale until the 1950s and I see the couple of houses there have got the name Malt House in their name. Well I think you'll agree what a delightful street to walk down. Okay right by the vicarage here and we're now going to start heading our way towards uh, Milton Abbey. Now this folks is where we're going to make a, a very small detour that I think is going to be well worthwhile. So we will be heading up this little road here past this really pretty little lodge but the detour just behind me here is uh, well the signpost there says Milton Abbey half a mile so we're gonna make our way along this path I think it's called Monk's Path locally which is going to take us along the side of a lake on one side and a meadow on the other just enjoying this little meander along a path shaded by woods on the left hand side. Now I mentioned there is a, a lake unfortunately it's on private land and we can't really see it. You can get a glimpse of it. I'll see, see if anything shows up. Certainly plenty of ducks and fish out there and this lake was uh, m actually made when the the old village was moved and a stream was was dammed up to create it. Ah, I just noticed a, a plaque on this post here and that reminds us that this location is where the old village used to be. A village of Middleton. Middle town, middle of Dorset but it was also known as Milton since about 1268 I think. I did see old maps of it. I mean, it was fairly substantial. There were houses and land either side of this path, but well, well over a hundred houses and a, a school and a, a pub. But now, well, just a wild meadow over there. And then I think on this side of the, um, the path as well, though it is on a slope, I think some of the land and houses were up there as well. Not very peaceful today. Wow, look at this. 
Now this is the Milton Abbey Church. I think it's dedicated to St. Samson, St. Mary and St. Branwallada. Founded here in 933 AD in the reign of King Athelstan, who was the first King of England. And in 964 AD it was handed over to Benedictine monks and a, a monastery was established. However, it was destroyed in a thunderstorm in 1309 and rebuilt over the 14th and 15th centuries with a north transept and tower extensions. Although the church was never totally finished and it, it still does look a bit incomplete in parts today. I mean, I'm not 100% sure if there's actually a nave there. Anyway, in 1539, the dissolution of monasteries came and Henry VIII sold the estate to uh, John Tregonwell in 1540. And most of the abbey buildings were demolished, but the church survived and a farmhouse was built here. Several changes of ownership uh, took place until it was bought by uh, Joseph Damer in 1752. Uh, there were some restorations in 1790 and he basically rebuilt the house here into a grand mansion between the 1760s and 1780s and incorporated into the house as the, the Great Hall built in 1498, basically part of the remains of the old medieval abbey buildings. Well I mentioned earlier that Baron Hambro bought the estate in 1852 and he did more restorations in 1865 when this porch was added I see there's some initials up there. Might be Carl J. Hambro and his second wife, Eliza. I'm not too sure. The estate was sold and divided up in 1932. And in 1953, a school bought it and a trust uh, set up to start the school. It opened here in 1954 and indeed it's still here. It's a, an independent school for day and boarders, uh, 225 pupils, I think, co-educational, but it's got everything, swimming pool, shooting range, uh, a 320 seat theater, an astroturf hockey pitch. And indeed, I'm actually standing on the, the golf course, which was built in the 1970s. I think it was uh, designed by uh, Peter Alice. Of course, he sadly died in uh, December of last year. Now, I should explain a little something about the path that uh, got us here. It was a public footpath. Um, I've got a book uh, called uh, Walks into History, Dorset, by John Wilkes, published in 2007. And it says there should be a permissive footpath from uh, the church here uh, to the road again, about 400 yards away but sadly I don't think it still exists so we're going to have to retrace our steps back along that public footpath which is a shame but the detour was certainly well worth uh, going through to have a look at the church and the views here are tremendous aren't they behind me what a fantastic place to go to school Whew, puffy and panting away means we're in a, an uphill section. <laughs> so I've made my way back along that footpath, past the lake and uh, the little lodge, and then along a road and uh, looked out for a little track that takes us to uh, Steepton Bill Farm Shop. We're not actually gonna go there, but it, it does um, teas and, and coffees. And I read somewhere that it was uh, highly commended in the Dorset Food and Drink Awards in 2020. But we can't stop I'm looking out for uh, a footpath sign. Yep, got it here on my left. A quarter of a mile to St. Catherine's Chapel. Um, and it's a permissive footpath along here. And this is our next destination, the Chapel of St. Catherine, which dates from 1190. As you can see, it's a, a simple nave and chancel, 
and it originally served the abbey down below because it's on a hill here and it was restored in 1901. Now legend has it that this was the site where King Athelstan camped with his army on their way north to meet the Danes and where he dreamt that he would be victorious and the English Chronicle tells us that his dream came true and Athelstan founded the Milton Abbey in memory of his victory although another theory is that he founded it to commemorate the death at sea of his brother Edwin for which he was said to have been responsible and it's claimed that uh, this camp included the earthworks to the north which uh, is hidden in woodland over there today um, but they could also be the remains of a, a minster wall or a, a chapel yard I did see a picture on the internet of a, a memorial stone um, that said this has been a special place for the Ford family since 1937 and those who are not here are here. <laughs> well being a Ford myself I was trying to find it but unfortunately I guess it must be inside the church which uh, is locked I'm afraid. I couldn't find anything outside but just to the side of the church isn't this a quite stunning view the uh, the abbey church down there below and uh, I think it, it almost makes a picture postcard doesn't it with the the avenues of trees either side now what's quite sad I have seen a picture um, I don't know how long ago it was but at one stage there was a series of terraces up here about 111 steps made from the garden of the main house below up to the chapel here and they were green steps turf bordered by yew trees um, well, the, the yew trees are still here but sadly everything seems to have been overgrown well there looks as though there's a sort of path down there but I can't see any steps which is a real shame because it must have looked quite a an impressive sight well, there's a little seat here I'm definitely going to sit down and uh, take this view in for a little while a lovely day to be out <laughs> I like your horses love the colors <laughs> He's a boy. <laughs> oh dear. Poor old Logan. He's always getting called a girl. Right, well we've been following this uh, delightful uh, wooded track away from the chapel and uh, looking out for these uh, signposts. Now if you're going to be doing this walk, I know a few people do follow the video and do the walk afterwards, um, as an aeroplane goes over, you need to look out for a downhill track. I think this is the second one on the left and there is a signpost here. This track is going to take us quite steeply downhill um, but we need to take that track for another part of the walk. So, uh, quick update on the route. That's the uh, track that we've come downhill and it wasn't too steep and when you get to the bottom there's a, a T junction um, and although this footpath sign says go to the left there is a path that goes to the right slightly uphill and that's the the one that we need to take to keep to our route. Well uh, another really pretty little walk along a track with wildflowers either side so we come at the uh, top of the track and if I just slowly pan the camera around to show you where we're going next you need to uh, head along this drive through these gates I mean it looks like a private drive but we're looking out for a, a bridle way on the right in about 20 yards time but wonderful uh, gates aren't they and these were um, well, they stood on the boundary of the, the Milton Abbey estate in the 1750s and they were built by Joseph uh, Damer as part of the gentrification of his land. Well, they really are quite wonderful. I'm presuming that's the old 
lodge. I don't, yeah, I think it's now residential. Okay, so I say roughly, oh, there we go. There's the bridleway sign about 20 yards on. We need to turn right here, and hopefully, we're going to get some really stunning views shortly. Well, I had to stop and uh, just admire this quite gorgeous view, looking out across the rolling Dorset countryside. A crop of, uh, looks like wheat in front of me, must be very close to being harvested. I reckon we must be quite high up here to get this uh, sort of vista. We're now on the homeward leg of the walk just come uh, downhill passing um, some fields, beautiful scenery up there and are now just coming into the outskirts of the village again, uh, part of the village known as Catherine's Well, the, the more modern part, I think they started building here in the 1940s. Well for those folk that will be doing this walk, um, you follow the footpath off from the fields, look out for a recreation ground and follow a footpath that goes alongside that and that comes out here into this little road and then there is a, a signpost, what does that say? Hog, Hoggen Down. So follow this little um, cul-de-sac and it's not obvious, well <laughs> I didn't think it was obvious where the footpath goes next but uh, you just need to head slightly right and then although it looks as though you're going into someone's driveway you can see the footpath uh, sign or marker there just on the left and uh, that's going to take us downhill back at uh, well the start of the main street that goes through the village. We're now back at the very top of the main street that goes through the village. Just by me here is a rather sweet little picnic area. There we go, Old Village Hall picnic area where families can uh, come and relax. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. We thought we'd uh, finish off back at the Hambro Arms for some light refreshment. As always say if you haven't already done so please do subscribe that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future and do check out our facebook page dave's countryside walks so until we meet again thanks for watching and cheerio oh lovely now i have got you some bacon fries i don't want you to be left out Thank you.